All right, welcome back to another video. We are starting the craft room again today. This is part three. And we are doing today basically just a lot of organization. Where we left off, you can see there's just kind of stuff everywhere, including just a husband with a bee hanging out. And Ow! And we have to organize this and put place, put things places. The first thing on the list that actually wasn't on the list at all, it was just, I thought of it and wanted to do it and Dan was available to help me do it, so we did it, was just sort of an aesthetic thing that I've been wanting for a long time. And that is this, that Dan just helped me put up. And it is a little hammock for the stuffed animals that I have made. Mostly like the ones that are up there that are all of my like first drafts that I keep. Like I just, I had this netting material. I have no idea where I got it. I don't remember honestly, but I've had it. And it stirred up the idea of doing kind of like a little stuffed animal hammock in the corner somewhere. So I could have all of my stuffed animals there and it would be a cute place. They would be off of the tops of shelves so I could use those shelves for other things. And Dan just helped me finish get it up. Just helped me finish getting it up. And now we're gonna start throwing stuffed animals in there to test. Not that one! Not that one. Not that, that one doesn't, that one's not one of the ones that goes in there. That's a, that's a, this goes in this box. This is, that goes there. You said it was for your stuffed animals. That's a stuffed animal. That is not one of those stuffed animals. Oh, it's not one of those stuffed animals. I have stuffed animals for different things. That does not go there. Here, you record. Oh, sure, why not? Yes, I'm gonna throw this guy in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny. I don't know why either. <laughs> yep, that's hysterical. <laughs> oh, so look at it! I, had, I love it. Okay, now we're gonna take all these guys because these are some of the stuffed animals that go up there. I'm gonna put the big stuff in the bottom there. Yeah. And then if you want to throw stuffed animals into there, you can throw some of these into there. Of course, I want to throw them in there. Okay. There we go. Just like Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Back and just you know, hit free throws. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's harder than it looks. There you go. <laughs> All right, come here, puppy. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Poor Lambo, like, really Stand wants up. to. Yeah! Ooh, in your face! <laughs> anyway. So, I might go back and organize them so they don't look like they've just been slam dunked into there. <laughs> So now we can get on to like organizing stuff. First up on my list of reorganizing all of this is to dust all of these shelves. So dusting is done. As you can see, I am still very pregnant. I think my due date is in like less than three weeks at this point. And I am trying to take full advantage of the little bit of nesting that I am feeling. I, it has not hit me hardcore. Like I don't feel the need to clean and organize everything, but I'm feeling it more than I used to. And I'm wanting to take full advantage of that. I can almost guarantee by the time this video comes out, he will already be here and probably be a couple months old. But as of right now, I am like stockpiling and getting as much footage as I can filmed so I can take time with him and not have to worry about editing and filming videos. What I am going to do now is essentially just pick one thing to start with and put in a place and go from there. So you are currently sitting on the bookcase that is directly under my plushy hammock. And on this shelf, I plan on having my printer and a different arrangement of books that I own and other miscellaneous large items that don't really have another home. So that is what I'm going to work on right now. And I think I'm going to start with putting the books here 
because the printer's already sitting up here. That's fine to just hang out and stay there for now. I can take a bunch of this other stuff off, but a lot of the books that I have, I'm going to work on rearranging those and trying to get those more or less able to fit on the very bottom shelf entirely so that I'm not taking up more than one shelf for books and then the second and third shelf can be for larger items that I'll hopefully eventually get to sticking there. Next up on my organizing agenda is this shelf. This is the shelf that is going to be for all of my in-progress projects and also all of my near future projects. My hope with this shelf is that I will not start anything unless it is on this shelf first. And if these shelves are full, then I will not start anything new at all until I clear up some space for new projects to go on this shelf. Next up, I am tackling my electronics shelf. This is going to hold my laminator, our scanner, all of my tripods, my extra cords and wires, my cameras, all of the electronic related goodies, all of my flash drives, all, all of that. I had mostly all electronics on this shelf anyway, but I wanted to reorganize it because there had gotten some craft overlap put into there and I wanted to keep this purely electronics, nothing else but also organize it in a way that actually looked good. That's gonna be a challenge. It might still look a little iffy by the time I'm done, but my hope is that it'll look nice and presentable at least. Hello, long time no see. So it has been two and a half months since that last clip-ish. I am no longer pregnant. My baby boy is asleep upstairs currently. I wanted to just kind of fill you in on what has been happening in this craft room. So first of all, I finished getting these black shelves stocked. So these ones on the corner here, this is like my electronics shelf and that's also just there right now. So I got that organized how I liked it. And then this one I did fully off camera. This is like my miscellaneous art supply slash journal slash notebooks shelf. So that is hanging out there. And then also off camera, I worked on getting my filing cabinet organized. The main reason for popping back in now is because something very exciting is happening in my craft room tomorrow. And that is this countertop craft table thing that I have been using since we moved here. So almost two years now is getting the boot because Dan built me a new sewing table. Like, custom. We sat down and I figured out what I wanted and how big I wanted things to be. And he built a well in the table for my sewing machine to fit into. So like the entire table is the same height as this part of my sewing machine. I am so excited. I cannot even describe to you how excited I am. So I need to get this table completely emptied out so that tomorrow we can take this out of here and get that sewing table in here. So while I'm working on emptying this out, I'm going to hand the camera off to Dan and he can show you the table and kind of talk you through what he did and why he built it. Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dan, if you haven't met me yet, I'm Julie's husband. And I know you don't see me very often, but here I am and Julie asked for me to show the table that I built for her. And so this is it, this is the sewing table. Uh, it was a lot of fun to build, uh, it took a lot of work, a lot of blood, and a little sweat, and very few tears. Uh, actually, no tears at all, not on this count. This took about six weeks to put together, um, and that six weeks with, you know, being away from work, but taking care of an infant, uh, which is, you know, uh, hopefully will, will prove to be time well spent. And so uh, she asked if I would just talk through some of the, the process of building 
uh, a table like this, uh, some thoughts that go into the design of it, and uh, what we hope uh, will turn out to be the, the, the fruit of, of building a table like this. The size of this table is roughly proportionate uh, to the space that she's going to be working with in her craft room, but then also because she's normally doing a lot of quilting, she wanted to make sure that she had a table with lots of space so that she could move around large swaths of quilt uh, from one side to the other uh, with, with greater ease. And so that means we also wanted to make sure we had rounded edges uh, that were soft so that it wouldn't snag quite as easily. And so that was one of the features that she wanted. She also wanted to make sure that, here I could show you, the yeah, these are the sort of rounded edges that she wanted to make it easier for the, the quilts to sort of drape over without getting snagged. Uh, she also wanted to make sure she had lots of uh, shelf space. So we uh, put the table resting on shelves on this side and then having lots and lots of drawers on this side. And then of course, a well for the sewing machine. Uh, another uh, feature in the way that this is designed, this is uh, designed to be assembled and disassembled in three different parts. So that the well, the leg, and the table itself are all one piece. And then the drawers and the casing is one piece. And then the shelves on the back are also one piece. And that's designed because uh, that way for several reasons. One, because this is all made out of solid wood, it's gonna be very heavy. And so being able to move it in three pieces instead of one is gonna be advantageous. Uh, but then also, it's going to make it a lot easier uh, to move it from uh, inside to outside uh, without the whole thing falling apart. Uh, another thing that uh, consideration that we went into this uh, is what type of wood to use uh, for a table design like this. Uh, we actually chose uh, yellow pine, which is among the less expensive uh, wood stock available, actually probably among the least expensive, even though by these market standards it's actually still pretty pricey. Um, but I chose yellow pine, uh, in part due to uh, for economic considerations, but then also because I am just a beginner woodworker, and so uh, using a softer wood like yellow pine is a little bit more forgiving just when you're learning how to uh, practice joinery, things like dovetails and dado joints, and trying to fasten all of those things together, I found uh, that working with a softer wood like yellow pine is actually a little bit more forgiving. But also the other consideration is that um, as with uh, the case with most uh, people who are building furniture, uh, especially just out of you know, regular woodworking, uh, they usually have uh, a lot of power tools that they're working with, whether that's drill presses or table saws, et cetera, et cetera. I don't really have a lot of that. Um, I have uh, a handful of power tools to be able to work with to help make the job easier. But other than that, it's mainly just um, saws, chisels, planes, uh, and that sort of thing. I try and get everything down to where, where it needs to go. And so, um, so that means that uh, a job like this actually took significantly longer to build, but also um, I'm not investing thousands and thousands of dollars in power tools that I don't know if I'm going to be using uh, much for the rest of my life. Because this is yellow pine, uh, not a real high quality wood, uh, it's not really, like, when it comes to uh, uh, stain and trying to give it a nice color, um, pine is not very good uh, in the way in which it absorbs stains. It usually comes out kind of splotchy. And so we just said, ah, forget it. We're not gonna bother with any kind of stain and just coat it with a few coats of polyurethane. So what you'll see on the outsides uh, is about two, maybe three coats. And then the top, we use four coats of polyurethane to make sure that this was sealed and as smooth as it could possibly be to try and avoid uh, the any fabric getting snagged uh, and caught or torn in, in any way, shape or form. All right, this is completely empty and I don't know why I moved everything away from like around it and it looks so tiny. Yeah, it's completely empty. It's already moved. I moved everything away from around it because we are going to need the space to move things around one. But two, my new table 
The tabletop is arguably twice the size bigger. Well, at this point you've seen it because Dan just showed it off to you. So now tomorrow is when we are going to be taking this old friend out and bringing the brand new sewing table in. It's happening! Yes, yes. So excited! <laughs> oh, it's okay, Elliot. He's overly excited. Here it is in all of its beautiful glory. Look at how good that looks. Now this is essentially where it's going to be, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I'm gonna need to like move it around anywhere. I think I like that placement. So I have plenty of room over here. There will be plenty of room over here once I get all these totes and boxes taken care of, but that will come. But look at this. Ugh, look at all of that storage I'm gonna have. And this is the most satisfying thing. Look, like that's, that's seamless. Oh my goodness, is that satisfying. I cannot describe how excited I am about this table. With that, I am going to end the video here because in the next craft room video that I do, we are going to be stocking these shelves and drawers and hopefully going through more of these totes to get rid of them out of here and just overall more organizing and hopefully, hopefully pretty soon I'm gonna start making actual like craft videos again, being able to do more stuffed animals, more quilts because now I have this awesome table and it would be an absolute pity to have it and not use it. So stay tuned for those videos and I will see you next week for my next video. Bye.